All right, welcome. My name is Rollins Rivera from Cohe City. I'm here with my buddy. Hi, I'm Cody Hosterman from Pure Storage. Today, we're going to talk about some of the details of our integration between Pure Storage and Cohe City. Obviously, we have a lot of really good technology that's modernized that allows uh, the enterprise businesses to move on and do things very effectively. But now we want to get into some of the details, how things work with integration between Pure and Cohesity, and how they tie into some of the newer things we've released with our architecture, our new file system, and how these things really come together, other than just kind of telling you some, you know, some sort of way to do that. We're going to actually show you what's up. Yep. Yeah, so and, and what this integration is all about is, is taking your snapshots on the array, your point in times from your data, and making sure that they are set to an enterprise class backup scheme, which is having multiple targets, right? Not having your initial, your data backup on the same place as your primary, right? And so let's go into a little bit how this is done between Cohesity and, and Pure. So there's two connections right, um, between the Cohesity and the flash array. So first, there is a uh, iSCSI connection that actually allows the data mobility uh, between the flash array and, of course, Cohesity. The second portion of this is, of course, REST. On the flash array, both controllers have a REST API service that you can make calls to to manage the flash array, right? Create volumes, create snapshots. What Cohesity is doing here, and they're doing uniquely, is actually leveraging our REST API diff to take differences between different snapshots and volumes and just store what's needed for that individual backup. So after you've configured your initial connection between Cohesity and the flash array, now you can start configuring your data protection policies for your volumes. So how does that work? Well, very effectively. So we actually utilize our SnapTree technology, which allows us to take very effective snapshots of any data at scale without having any sort of performance degradation or anything like that. So we actually bring this down to this level here. And when you look at the metadata aspect with this lift, SnapTree lives right in here. Now, this entire process is carried through or configured through a policy framework, which allows us to mitigate or eliminate any sort of potential human risk of errors or potentially forgetting how to do this effectively. Now, by being able to maintain a lot of different snapshots, a lot of different pointing times, allows us to retain information data more for longer periods of time so that you can actually take it off pure for some time so that you can only have the number of snaps that you want to keep for potential different use cases, test and dev, or some kind of sort of DevOps use case. And here you can actually sustain all the information that you need without having any potential risk of, of losing it in the event that there's a power outage and things are not accessible in the primary storage array here. We can take this information from any point in time and recover it to whether the same source or a different destination if we have to. So the next question is, how does this process work? Once you've got it configured, once you have the, the connection set up, you have your policies configured, what, what does it actually do to get the data between the flash array and, of course, the cohesity? Well, the first step is you, you, know, you, choose, you choose your volume. Right? This is on the flash array. And there's an initial iSCSI connection to do the data copy from that volume onto Cohesity. From that point on, uh, you can choose individual flash array snapshots. And these will be chosen through policy or so forth. Mm -hmm. And it'll leverage the REST API diffs to figure out the differences that it actually, actually needs to be stored on, on the Cohesity appliance. And then eventually restored back to the flash array. So how does that process work? Well, very similar. So the data is going to be stored. You choose a snapshot you want to restore from. It'll send it back through the iSCSI connection to this volume, putting it in that point in time you want to recover to, and then it'll connect it to the proper host. And this could be a VMware environment. This could be anything, Hyper-V, whatever. It doesn't matter. The cool thing about it is also we can, able, we can also, because we both have sort of automation sort of, way, of workflows and frameworks that plug into other cloud management platforms, specifically the realized automation, this could be sort of deliver also in a self-service kind of approach. Absolutely. Using the anything as a service functionality inside of vRealize Automation through vRealize Orchestrator, you could set this up as a self-service approach to your end users. I want to recover from this point in time. If that point in time is on the flash ray, well, it'll leverage a flash ray workflow. If that point in time is on Cohesity, well, it'll leverage our workflow. There you go. So very easily done, very nicely done. So actually covering multiple different, multiple and different type of interfaces that can actually be done. Either way, from a primary storage perspective as well as a secondary storage perspective, it's important to understand that you don't keep your snapshots in your primary storage for a data protection approach. We keep them in your secondary platform, in our case, in Cohesity, where we can provide data protection and keep, you think, keep your data and information safe all the times, depending on what happens. Sounds great. That's it. Money. Oh my God, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. This was just amazing.